Hi, my name is Baskar. I'm from Visaco GMAT. Visaco GMAT is a sister concern of 2IM. We conduct classes for the GMAT. Quick half a minute introduction. I did my engineering from Gindi Engineering College, Anna University. Subsequently took my CAT. Graduated from IIM Calcutta in 1994. That's quite ancient, right? So this is briefly about what I have done. This focus on today's topic is getting the most out of your CAT preparation. I want you guys to squeeze as much as what you can from the 8 to 10 months preparation that you are done for CAT, the CAT that is over, right? So what do you make out of it? How do you stretch this preparation and gain value out of it? There are two themes I'm going to be talking about in today's video. The first one, it's too soon to hit the snooze button. I'm talking about it specifically with respect to the other MBA examinations that you will be writing. Particular focus is basically X80, right? I took the CAT, cleared CAT, got into IIM Calcutta, and those days we had only four IMs. XLRI was there even then. And the XAT examination happened almost a month or a month and a half after the CAT. Things have not changed in 25 years. And student behavior has also not changed in the last 25 years. I was like the majority of you. The day CAT got over, I think it was December 6th or December 7th in the year I took CAT, right? Just went party, right? Three, four months, you were like preparing sincerely for CAT. Every Saturday, Sunday after work, I was in Bombay those days, right? Basically sit, take mock CATs, do analysis, keep hitting yourself saying that, why is the score not going up? Why is that not going up? I would have wanted to touch 120, it's only at 99. You do all of those things. Only good thing is we didn't have a percentile score at that point in time. We didn't have internet at that point in time. Life was a little simpler. So you had a bunch of small group of people with whom you prepared and you compared scores with them. But the day the cat got over, all of us went partied. There were one or two bright spots among us who basically after cat maintained their preparation momentum for the subsequent examinations. Those days we used to have FMS as a separate examination, IFT as a separate examination, Maharashtra CET as a separate examination. We had uh, exams for symbiosis and the XAT. These guys essentially took one or two mocks from the time the CAT got over till all of these exams got over. I remember the last of the examinations that I wrote was FMS, which was in the end of January. By then I had practically forgotten whatever I had prepared for the CAT. Don't let that happen. Be among the serious 10%. I'm talking about 10% of those who prepared seriously for CAT maintain the momentum through and through. So my sincere advice is, it's important that you take a couple of mocks, mock ZAT, mock SNAP, whatever is the examination that you're taking, keep the momentum up every week till you write these examinations. Therefore, because 90% of the people are not maintaining this momentum, those guys who actually had a lower CAT percentile and maintained this momentum in their preparation because their CAT did not go as well as they wanted, they ended up getting a higher percentile in the XAT. Not because they suddenly became super intelligent or they prepared too much during this one month period. It's because the serious competition basically whittled down. They basically put up their legs and said that I'm going to hit the snooze button and I'm going to sleep. Don't let that happen. That's my first and foremost thing. The second thing I want you to focus on is basically Leverage your CAT preparation and get your GMAT in place. What is a GMAT for? Most of you know. GMAT is the examination that you write to do an MBA, predominantly for schools outside India. Of course, a lot of programs within India also accept the GMAT. Right? Why should one go about and writing the GMAT? I'll walk you through the process. One thing that comes to our mind the moment we talk about GMAT, the GMAT examination itself is more expensive than the CAT. You spend close to 20,000 rupees as the examination fee, 250 plus dollars. Right? Then you send the scores, you pay a lot of money all through the way. It's quite expensive. Right? The second thing, at the back of our mind, any education outside India is going to be a lot more expensive, which is factual. I'm not saying no. An MBA from the IIMs will set you back by about 20 lakhs, give or take a 4-5 lakhs this way, that way. An MBA from ISB will set you back by 40 lakhs. But we are talking about the order of magnitude of $100,000 when you want to do an MBA outside India. That's twice as much as what you will be spending for an MBA within India. Despite that, does it make sense to do the GMAT? Yes, it makes sense to do the GMAT. For whom does it make sense? It makes sense for everyone. If you're a fresher still in college in the final year, it makes sense for you to do the GMAT. If you're someone with two to three years of experience, it makes sense to do the GMAT. I will walk you through the process. See, you do the, you've done the CAT. In about a week's time, you'll know what your score is practically. The simple reason, you'll know how many questions you got right, how many you got wrong. IAMs will release the correct answers to you and you can compute it, then the only thing that's going to hold back is basically what is going to be the normalization process of the score. 
and come January 1st week, you know your percentile. For a moment, let's assume that you got a 99.8 percentile in the CAT. I'm not talking about people who have not scored that well. Even if you are someone who scored a 99.8 percentile in the CAT, the two important steps to go before you can call it a day and say that I've got an admit into an IM. 99.8 percentile does not necessarily translate into a shortlist for the subsequent stage. Because there are other things that go into the picture, right? Profile, how much you scored in 10th, how much you scored in 12th, what is your undergraduate score, how many months of experience do you have, many things play a role. Are you an engineer, are you a non-engineer? All of these factors finally result in getting a call for the subsequent stages. And having got a call on the subsequent stages, it doesn't mean that you convert 100%. Obviously, the conversion rate, the second stage is not 100%. That's known to us. So there is a VAT to be done, there is a PA to be done, and all of this will finally result in an admit. There are many people for whom it's been a slip between the cup and the lip between getting a 99.8 percentile in the CAT and actually seeing it to an admit into the IM. I'm not saying it's going to happen that way for you, but what if it is? You need to have a backup option. You've invested six to eight months into the CAT preparation. Now, can you stretch it a little bit more and have one more examination which lends itself beautifully with certain things which I'll define and describe at the end of this, towards the end of this video. Right? So it makes sense to write the GMAT for the following reasons. The first and foremost reason is basically this. You have invested eight months of time. Make it count. Conservative estimators, 60% of the preparation that you have done for CAT is, can be used as is when it comes to the other examinations, particularly when it comes to the GMAT. GMAT also tests quant, GMAT also tests verbal, and GMAT also has an equivalent of DILR section called the integrated reasoning section. So gist of what you have learned, right? Your quadratic equation, permutation probability, geometry is going to hold good here, right? 60% of the preparation is done and dusted. You do not want to let that go for a waste. What is the remaining 40%? I'll walk you through what is that 40% and what's the timeline that we are looking at in terms of what you need to invest. The 40% includes a part of quant, right? Which part of quant? There's a significant number of questions, 35 to 40% of the questions in the GMAT quant section, which are data sufficiency questions. It's a completely different beast. Even if you had got 100% in the CAT quant section, unless you do adequate practice for the DS section, the DS component of the quant, you are unlikely to score well in the quant section of the GMAT. These basically take the CAT quant concepts and then entwine it with a layer of, can I find the answer with the information given? So there is a bit of logical reasoning that comes on top of quant to answer DS questions. There are people who scored high in CAT quant and I walked in and written the CAT, GMAT quant and realized that they were not adequately prepared for the DS. Give yourself anything from 10 to 15 days, let's say two weeks time to prepare for the quant DS. How do you go about it? Understand the mechanics, solve about 400 to 500 questions. You are in ship shape to actually write the quant section of the GMAT. So done justice to your CAT quant, done justice to the GMAT quant DS, you should expect anything upward of 90 percentile when it comes to the GMAT quant section. What next? Verbal, verbal in GMAT and verbal in CAT are significantly different. There is a common element between the two which gets covered in the 60% which is reading comprehension. A third of the questions in the GMAT verbal section are reading comprehension. Pretty much like 75% of the questions in CAT happen to be reading comprehension. RC in GMAT is tough. RC in quant was not, RC in CAT was not so difficult in the past. But this year, entire thing changed. CAT RC is not as easy as it used to be. So if you've done well in your CAT RC, I think you should be able to do well at least in one third of the verbal section, which is the RC component. What do you need to do in terms of preparing for the GMAT RC? What do you need to do in terms of preparing for the GMAT RC is basically practice two to three RC passages from now till the time you write the GMAT. So that's one component when it comes to the verbal section. Six weeks for it, you're going to do three passages over the next six weeks till your GMAT is written. What else do you spend time on? Invest two weeks of the six weeks, four to six weeks time into preparing for sentence correction. CAT practically does not have any sentence correction. Sentence correction accounts for another one third of the questions when it comes to the GMAT verbal. Typically test about eight to nine common error types. It will take you about a week to get your handle on all of the grammar rules and the error types that are tested and another week or a week and a half. So let's say two and a half weeks to ramp it up with about 500 or 400 sentence correction questions. If you do justice to those 400-500 questions, you should be able to ease, ease most parts of sentence correction. If I can give an analogy, the sentence correction component of the GMAT verbal is the most similar to 
a formulaic question when it comes to the quant section right rule based yes there are some things which are not necessarily rule based they are basically usage based they call it the communication kind of questions but a big chunk of it is grammar rule based question you ace them you get a lot of those questions right you get a good score in the gmat verbal there is a third component in the gmat verbal which is called critical reasoning so basically logical arguments right you understand what's the conclusion what's the author trying to drive you at and then the questions would ask you to strengthen weaken the argument again a week to understand how do you identify the conclusion what kind of a question is it how do you evaluate an argument run through all the basics with a few examples and then spend another week or week and a half ramping it up with about 400 to 500 practice questions so two and a half weeks of sentence correction two and a half weeks of critical reasoning i'm just throwing in a week to buffer everything up and six weeks during this interval preparing for the rc should see you through to get a score which is 90 percentile and above when it comes to the verbal section of the gmat so roughly two weeks to ramp up quant in terms of ds another six weeks to ramp up your verbal preparation that's eight weeks gone use the last two weeks to do anything from six to eight mock gmats right take a mock gmat every other day so from the day you start two plus six plus two 10 weeks, two and a half months from now, right? If you're starting in January, by mid February, you should be able to write the GMAT. So you've done justice to 60% of it. Do another 40%. You've crossed more than halfway of the bridge. Now, doing that like little extra bit basically gets you one more examination into the bag. What's the beauty about writing the GMAT? Two important things that come, and I'll also walk you through other benefits. The first and foremost thing is the CAT examination is conducted once a year. So if it did not go as well as you planned on the 29th of November 2020, you need to wait a year out. GMAT examination can be taken 365 days of the year. So I've given you a 12 week window to prepare for it, a 10 week window to prepare for it. And then you realize something happened midway through, you have to stretch it from 10 to 12 weeks. You can write the examination 12 weeks from now instead of 10 weeks from now. Conversely, you just built momentum. You're between jobs. You've taken a sabbatical from work for the cat. And you realize that you've amped your preparation in such a way that you're actually scoring really well. A 740, 750 in your mock GMAT, five weeks from now. You don't have to hold out for 10 weeks just because I told you, because it's not a fixed date. Fifth week from now, if you're ready to write the GMAT, go and hit the road, write the GMAT, get the score, bank it, right? What do I mean by bank it? That's the second biggest advantage. You write the CAT this year, get a score of CAT. That score of CAT will get you an admit for 2021. You cannot use this CAT score anything beyond that. The GMAT score is valid for five years. So take the GMAT, let's say in mid-February 2021, you can apply to a business school MBA that starts as late as 2026 September because the application for a 2026 fall calendar will be during 2025 fall, right? Which is like September, October of the year before that. When you apply if your GMAT score on the application deadline date, if your GMAT score is a valid score, which it will be if you take the GMAT in 2021 February, your GMAT score is valid. It's not the reason, see, if it is, someone will say that, hey, the GMAT score is four years old. So what? It's a valid score. So it's still valid. So if you stretch your preparation, get the GMAT score, get a 730, get a 740, 750 kind of a score and keep it. You can choose to apply next year, go to a business school next year itself. Conversely, you could choose to do it four years down the line. The choice is yours. So that is what you get by stretching this preparation, doing another 40% over and above the 60 that you did. Is it worth for worth it for freshers to do it? Yes, freshers can get to do a program called the MIM, which is gaining a lot of momentum. Yes, freshers without any experience can join top business schools like London Business School, like uh, quite a lot of schools both within US and Europe that have this MS in management or the equivalent called MIM in Europe, which admit freshers. If you have anything about three years of experience, you can take the straightforward MBA program with this kind of experience that you have. So it's useful for people who are freshers as well as for people who are basically with experience. What are the three most significant benefits of writing the GMAT? One is choice. Quite evident, if you write the CAT, write the X80, the schools that you have are basically restricted to the Indian geographical domain. Write the GMAT, practically every school in the world accepts the GMAT, including programs within India. Yes, obviously the IAMs for their flagship program do not accept the GMAT, but leaving those out, 90% of the good business school programs in the world accept the GMAT. So you can take a shot at applying to schools in the US, Canada, Australia, anywhere. As in you think about Europe, any part of the world, you can apply. So choice and options open out. Second thing is chance. What do you mean by that? Look at a school such as SPJ. 
SP Jain for the PGDM program, accept the CAT score and also accept the GMAT score. Let's say you took the CAT and your CAT score is not up to scratch. It does not get you a shortlist into SP Jain. But you ramped up your GMAT preparation and your GMAT score is good enough for you to get a shortlist into the same school. You have a shot at the same school that you were planning to apply to with a CAT score. Now you stand a better chance because with GMAT, you might get into the shortlist, which you would not have got because your CAT score was not up to the mark. So it gives you a second chance at many of these schools which accept CAT and the GMAT. The third thing, it changes the way you look at the cost dynamics of an MBA. If you manage to score a 99 percentile in the CAT, I'm not going to say that it's immediately going to translate into 99 percentile in the GMAT. But what it does is, if you ramp up your preparation for the next two to two and a half months, you have a good chance. I would bet that if you do justice with a 99 percentile in CAT, you should be looking at a 99 percentile in the GMAT also. It's not like to like, but you have the potential to get that score, provided you invest the amount of effort that is required. A 99 percentile in CAT in, in GMAT is 750 in the GMAT. Have a 730 upward score and you apply to schools outside India. The top 30 schools outside India with a 730 plus 750 plus score, you have a chance of getting not only an admit, but from a handful of school, you also get tuition fee waiver. It could range anything from 50% to 100%. And there are schools, they've had students who got a 750 in the GMAT, went to schools such as Fisher and Ohio State University with a 100% tuition fee waiver and also a stipend to do the MBA. It essentially means that he got a full right waiver as in he did not pay a single cent to complete his MBA. Look at the ROI of doing an MBA of that kind. The denominator is zero. ROI is obviously going to be infinity. Notwithstanding that, if you do not pay anything, if you get a tuition fee waiver to do your MBA, then you can choose to work in the US if you want to. Or if you're one of those persons who want to come back to India, either for personal reasons or for other reasons, you can come back to India because you did not run up a big loan and you don't have the pressure to pay the loan off with US dollar terms and then come back to India at a later date. It gives you a lot of choices. It changes the way you look at an MBA if you have a good GMAT score. Can you do it? I certainly think you guys can do it. All that you need to do is stretch your CAT prep a little bit, right? Give another three months. Do not stop preparing right away. Just be at it. By February end, if you have your GMAT score, the process of preparing for GMAT is no different from what you need to do to prepare for the XAT or SNAP or any of those other examinations. So it also comes in handy in ensuring that you get calls from the other schools. So it has multiple benefits. So don't quit your CAT prep asset. Just be at it and convert all of these things into something meaningful. The eight months effort that you put in into something meaningful. Want to know how to exactly go about it? You also conduct an online course for the GMAT at this URL gmat.visaco.com or call us on 919500-48484. Right? Speak to Roshan, speak to Shivatsan, they'll be able to help you with this process. Rest assured, the kind and quality of teaching and the support that you have started expecting from 2IM, you'll get it in Visaco also. Best wishes guys. Hush.